Welcome to the concept of evidence-based practice. Concept exemplars and outcomes, introduction to best practices, individual preferences, develop a PICO question. We'll kind of go over that. You guys did that with your discussion board. Describe and define the components of evidence-based practice. Explain the role of evidence-based individual prefer preferences and determining best clinical practice. Construct a research question based on your current nursing practices. Identify relationships between best practice, individual preference, and client outcomes. Evidence-based practice is used to bridge the research and nursing practice. Research is a formal, systemic way of answering questions or approaching a problem. Evidence Clinical is clinical knowledge, expert opinion, or information resulting from research. So there are three components of evidence-based practice, evidence-based from most current research available, um, two is the nurse's clinical expertise, and three is the patient's preferences, which uh, reflect needs, interests, and choices. An overview, overview of evidence-based practice, recording, uh, reordering of priorities in the medical field led to emphasis on practice-oriented research in the 70s. Professional nursing organizations encouraged nursing uh, research and development of best nursing practice based on the current best knowledge. Uh, Transitional re translational research, I'm sorry, uh, translation of scientific evidence into practical applications, uh, informational flows uh, back and forth between researchers and clinicians, uh, benefits uh, may uh, speed the process or from discovery to application, and risks in applications um, and technologies might not have been evaluated uh, enough from an ethical and social perspective. Nursing clinical research. Nurses can use evidence-based practice in the clinical practice to improve patient care as they collaborate with other disciplines, assist patients through a uh, system in various roles, so a care provider, an advocate, a teacher, a researcher, and they ensure open, effective communication and continuity among healthcare team members and patients and families. Using evidence-based practice can help nurses ensure credibility of their profession, provide accountability for nursing care. So this is a big deal because uh, there wasn't a lot of research on nursing care and the things that we were doing being that they were effective. So um, medicine was based on the medical model and it was based on physicians and physician orders. Um, advocating for those patients instead of the nursing orders that were and the nursing things that were helping keep these patients alive. So to actually have a true discipline as of nursing, we needed to have and to have a profession of nursing, we needed to have clinical research. So that's why clinical research and evidence-based practice is so important. Parts of clinical research, um, we're just going to graze over this. So parts of clinical research include funding. We got to know where it's coming from. Organizations will fund uh, grants, um, private practices, colleges, those types of things are going to fund this research. Uh, participants, this is what the, your population is, your participants in these programs, in this research. Um, your ages, your uh, uh, date of birth, your um, population, your, your cultures, ethical and legal issues. A uh, big legal issue is informed consent, the right to full disclosure of the information of the study. So that means if someone asks about this study, they are an legally bound to give them a full disclosure of what the study is. Right to withdraw from the study at any time. As a participant, you should have the right to withdraw at any time. There is a really good movie that I will bring up for you guys uh, that shows a really good um, struggle with this. It's called Wit. Uh, if you guys could look up the movie Wit, W-I-T, and um, actually watch the movie, and you'll see the difference with the uh, about a cancer patient who gave her body to science 
um, you'll see what I mean. Uh, there's a difference between um, legal consent and informed consent and the, able, the ability to withdraw from a study at any time. Um, given in written form, this is, has to be given in written form before the study. Um, beneficence, uh, protection of your patients, uh, participants from all harm, injury, and exploitation. Um, and it's actually our job to protect them. So if we see that something's going on, even if it is during a study and we don't think it's ethical, we are definitely uh, able to advocate for our patients and step in so that they don't get harmed, injured, or exploited. Um, justice, fair treatment of all of our patients, and it's the same thing, all of our participants in this research um, need to be treated fairly with justice. Uh, implica implications for practice, um, this is providing best evidence-based practice, supporting the professional discipline of nursing. Like I said, this is supporting nursing actions, not necessarily diagnosis and those types of things, but these are for nursing actions. Defining current best practice standards, um, and the people that uphold these are the ANA, the NLN, um, so American uh, Nursing Association, a National League of Nursing, and the Joint Commission. Developing evidence-based practice. Step one, develop a clinical question. So we're gonna use this mnemonic, the PICO question. Formulate a clinical question for evidence-based practice. So a population. So a population or a problem of interest. So a population of interest of mine, let's say, um, let's say children with diabetes. Okay, an intervention um, would be uh, a prognosis or a factor, a type of exposure, okay? So let's say a keto diet, okay? Um, in comparison of uh, interventions, a regular ADA diet um, or a regular diet, no, no ADA. So let's just say a regular diet, so no intervention. And then the outcomes, it was this, what was the outcome of this and the time frame? Let's say within six months, what was the difference? PICO develops um, the foreground of the questions and that apply to evidence-based and clinical situations and problems. So, um, let's say an obese ad adolescence um, intervention would be exercise versus no exercise. The outcome, what was the, the outcome for these uh, patients, these participants in a six month time frame? Step two, you gotta retrieve the evidence and you have to review the pertinent literature. So you have to go in and look at the, the, the literature, the, the, uh, the articles, the things, the scientific articles, the journals um, to see their methodology um, and you have to write a conclusion on the study results relevant to these references. Step three, you have to evaluate the evidence. So evidence must be critically appraised, uh, valid, it has to be valid, reliable, and useful. Uh, nurses must be able to critique the research and the articles are, um, are to identify the strengths and weaknesses of the studies. So if uh, one study had a thousand participants and another had 10, which one might you want to believe? I would believe the one with a thousand, you know, because that has more variability, that has more uh, of, a, of a crowd um, snapshot. <clears throat> Allows nurse to discard materials that do not meet the standards for application and patient care. Um, so we have to sift through the, some of this research because some of it's not really um, quality research. Step four, we have to apply the evidence. So now we've figured out that yes, exercise does work. So um, integrate the best evidence with your uh, with your nurses and known in the known clinical experience um, and patient preferences. So okay, exercise works, but what kind of exercise do you want to do? <laughs> okay, um, evaluate the change in practice for impact on your patient outcomes. Uh, begin this begin at implementation. Monitor the progress, the, the process, the progress, the change. Um, evaluate if, uh, of corrected implementation um, results 
um, for areas of improvement. So you always want to be evaluating this, like, ooh, where could we improve next time? Accept, reject, or modify the change uh, for clinical practice. If uh, the change is beneficial, work with management to modify the facility's policies, and if it's not, you don't. Um, change then becomes part of nursing routine. Strategies to implement evidence-based practice. Self-assessment uh, to determine how much uh, the current nursing practice and ev is evidence-based. Um, we need to look at it. We need to look at your facilities and see, hey, is this really evidence-based? Um, assesses obstacles, preventing more frequent use of evidence-based practice, internal factors, external factors, um, practice ra uh, raising questions about current clinical practices, solving problems. It's kind of like the Curos caps that I said, you know, this was a problem. We keep getting infections. How can we fix it? Um, acquire more information or correct uh, misconceptions. So there might be a misconception that, hey, you know, we need these caps, but we don't need to, um, because we have the cap on, we don't need to scrub the hub. Well, no, that's not right. Technically, we still need to scrub on top of having the caps on there, and that's what the evidence says, okay? If the time is released as limited, focus on the evidence from the high yield sources. So you got to look at the, the big the big studies. Uh, current, you got to make sure it's current. Can't be over ten years. Um, I like over five um, because that's more recent, and a lot of places will only take over five. I'm sorry, under five years. So under five years. Um, Let's see here. You can go to um, the guideline.gov for the free resource complementation um, compilations of evidence reviews and practice guidelines. Strategies continued. Uh, use internet to cut down some time uh, if you needed to, to find good evidence choices. Learn how to do critical appraisal of evidence. Build awareness of how and why things are done to identify how much evidence base is being used. Identify other interested in uh, searching for evaluating evidence for collaboration. Volunteer to participate in professional nursing practice committees and participate in research projects of evidence-based process. Thank you for listening.